Hello, my name is Ginny Woods and my spiritual name is Karma Doma. I'm a resident of Nevada County in California and making this video so that I can give people an opportunity to know that there is a place in India that has a tremendous need for compassionate action for people being able to give of themselves. This video that we're going to be showing is pictures that I've taken from my many years of travel to India, particularly to Bihar and to Bodh Gaya, focusing on the eyes of the people. The video is looking at ourselves as humans, as brothers and sisters, and really embracing the preciousness of our human life. And when I've started traveling and taking photos of people in India, particularly the children and the people who live on the streets, I was so struck by the amount of suffering that was visible in their eyes, even if they would smile. And so when you see this video, it's taken with a place of, of heart consciousness, really coming from a caring for these people, not wanting to document a tourist person's vision of India, but looking at it from the point of view that wanting to share how we're all one and how through the eyes we really can see that we are each other's brothers and sisters and wanting to be there for each other. So I hope that you will feel moved by it and that it will take from your eyes right to your heart that feeling of compassion and again knowing that there's something we can do about it we can even just embracing that place in ourselves of of loving kindness to ourselves to our family hopefully expanding that to all beings including the animals in the world that need help so thank you for coming
The project that I'm involved in is called the Maytree Project. It's part of a um, project that is mainly based in India, in northeastern India, in the state of Bihar, which is near Nepal. It's the poorest part of India, the most densely populated, the area that has probably the highest illiteracy rate and also has a tremendous amount of homeless people. Um, a lot of villages are so removed from the main areas of Bihar that when the rainy season comes they're not even accessible. So children have very little education, very little opportunity to have any type of medical care. There's a high percentage of leprosy, which we call Hansen's disease, that is in India, and a lot of it is focused in that area. The focus of the clinic is actually in a part of Bihar that's called Bodh Gaya. Bodh Gaya is a very important Buddhist area because it's where Lord Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree and attained enlightenment. So very interesting the dichotomy there that there is so much suffering in that area with the people and the animals and it's also such a spiritually enlightening place to be. The first time I'm going to be going as a volunteer back to Bodh Gaya and working at the hospital will be the beginning of December 2011 this year. Um, this time I'll be going for three weeks and after that there's been a number of people in the community here who have been interested in coming and so if not this time perhaps in 2012 or later uh, there'll be an opportunity to bring groups of volunteers there to help. There's so many different ways people can get involved and so that would be a wonderful opportunity. The hospital provides um, free meals and lodging for the volunteers that come. There's um, a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere in the community, although it's a spiritual atmosphere, it's also filled with a lot of joy and hope and opportunity.
Frequently people have asked me why I want to go and work with people that have leprosy. Um, certainly the more technical word for it is Hansen's disease, but I think leprosy is a more commonly known word. My response is that a number of years ago I was in northern India and where His Holiness Dalai Lama lives, which is called Dharamsala. And when I would come outside from my hotel each morning, I would notice that there were certainly beggars all over and many of them had bandages on their missing arms or legs and were obviously had leprosy. But there was one older woman who was just beautiful who used to sit on the street on a piece of cardboard right next to where I was. She had no hands and no feet. She walked on the bone that stuck out, that was from her leg that stuck out her foot and she'd hold her little stubs together and smile this beautiful smile at me every morning and shake her little jar of coins and I would give her some coins. And over the weeks that I stayed there, I began to feel more and more close to her and saw her as such an opportunity of, of another person, could be my mother, could have been my sister, who was really in in need. She didn't choose to have leprosy. She didn't choose to be a beggar on the street in Dharamsala. And it really started to open my heart. So one day I, rather than just giving her some coins, I sat down next to her and put my arm around her and she started to cry. Um, I realized that we couldn't communicate. She spoke Hindu and I spoke English, but I was realizing that she hadn't been touched in the longest time. And as the days went on, it was very cold, it was winter up there, and I started to notice she didn't wear a sweater, she had a thin cotton dress, nothing on her feet, and because she had no feet actually to put anything on. And one day I sat down next to her and her body was shaking, she was so cold, and I ran and bought a blanket for her and wrapped it around her, and she stood up and hugged me and began to cry and then it was the end of the day so she walked off to wherever she was staying. Part of me wanted to follow her and yet it felt like I would be invading her own privacy to do that. And later a cab driver who I had befriended there said she lived in a piece of cardboard box down the street. We don't know how she could light a match to make any warmth or heat any tea or anything and she was there every day. So I had people that would help me speak with her over the time and really befriended her. That is what opened my heart to knowing that I wanted to go back and help educate people about leprosy, about how it's so difficult to contact it. It's not a contagious disease as we would think of a cold or a flu. It's very, very difficult for people to get it. And yet we shun these people. Her story was that she was a mother of two daughters in southern India and when the white patches of leprosy began to show on her hands, the village people noticed that she had it and she was kicked out of her home by her daughters. She was told that she could never return because she was a leper. And although the World Health Organization and many projects including the Maitri Project in India provide free medication. For her, she said that she couldn't at that point ever return to her village even if she was cured because they all knew she was considered a leper. So she moved to northern India and became a beggar and has been for 20 years. Once a year, the government gives her a free train pass. All the money that she makes from begging, she takes home to her children and gives it to her daughters and then goes back to her little shack and lives. And if it were in another country, if it were my mother or your father or your child, I think that it would really touch our heart and we would want to do something for them. And so that's why I'm so drawn to work with people in this way. And when I found out there was an opportunity to go to India and to get regularly involved in the Maitri Project, who offer all of these services to more than just the leper people, but to people that are homeless, people that are, have deformities, 
um, as we said, that are illiterate, uneducated. I just feel it's an opportunity for me to go and do all I can and want to make it something that I'm doing regularly for the rest of my life. Being able to ask people to help either to come with me, but more realistically to probably donate some funds if not that, maybe children's clothing and sweaters are the other two things the project really needs. I would be imagining they would also need educational supplies. They have many schools in many of the local villages that are inaccessible during the rainy season. Um, teachers live there year-round at the villages to help the children. And there's many opportunities to get involved, so that's what I'm hoping to do. Maitri is a Sanskrit word, M-A-I-T-R-I, -I, Sanskrit word that means compassion and um, really represents the idea of caring for other beings, putting others before oneself. The project itself, the Maitri Charitable Trust, was started in 1989 by two Tibetan lamas who are very renowned. One has already passed over and died, but the original um, trust was started by Lama Tupton Zopa, who is a Rinpoche, meaning he is a reincarnation, and Lama Tupton Yeshe. And they had the idea of creating a trust, a service to the people of India, particularly in this area of Bihar that's so poor, that would provide all types of services, social services, medical, education, and um, rehabilitation services, humanitarian, um, even services for animals, projects that involve veterinarian care, that involve being able to house animals that are homeless in addition to homeless humans. So it's quite an extensive project that is received by people all over the world in a way that they are supportive of it. Um, the trust is nonprofit in India and also in Italy. The trust was started um, by these two lamas and then put under the directorship of a woman from Italy who is still the director there. I was in touch with her years ago and um, more recently in the last three or four months have been in very direct contact with her to see what I as an individual could do to help her with all of the work that she's doing and um, have come to the place where this video and any type of exposure for them is to gain support for this charitable trust for the services that they offer. They have a compound in Bihar in Bodh Gaya area and the compound is similar to a, a community village where the 
the poorest of the poor Indians come and live. There's hospital there, there's sanitation services, there's an opportunity for women to come and be educated where they will no longer need to be living as street people but will have an opportunity to provide for their own income and for their families. There is services for women and children, particularly pregnant women, so that they can get some kind of care in um, India and then particularly Bihar and most especially in Bodh Gaya, the infant mortality rate is tremendously high and so the trust is offering a lot of opportunity for women to learn about pregnancy and learn about health and cut down on that aspect of infant mortality. There's also a tremendous amount of leprosy or Hansen's disease in India and again mostly focused in this area. AIDS is starting to be more um, prevalent also but the leprosy program has been going on with the support of the World Health Organization for over 20 years now. World Health provides free medication. Leprosy is a totally curable disease and when it's caught early there's no deformities. There's it would be like us having the flu. Um, nobody would know after you were treated with six to 12 months of medication that you ever even had it. The stigma for leprosy in the world, particularly in Asian countries and in India, um, most especially, is a lot of stigma. People still have the old attitude of leprosy, that it's a horrible disease, that you're a leper you're an untouchable and so once a person is diagnosed with leprosy they're often removed from their village they're banned from their homes they live in the streets they have um, no access to health care often because if they have health care then they're no longer able to beg because they don't have the means for an, um, an opportunity to make money anymore. So there's a lot of education for the public, for the people that have the disease, but also for the public so that people can begin to shift their attitude and realize it's not something to be afraid of. There's um, projects at this compound also for working with animals, bringing street animals in. There's veterinary services, um, tremendous amount of things. So. I, I was very drawn ever since I became a nurse in my 20s to want to do volunteer work when I got older to help people in other countries and this opportunity came up so I'm very happy to have the opportunity to go to help and to involve other people, giving them an opportunity to put their compassion into action, giving people an opportunity to um, support this project by donating money that will be brought to the hospital directly to help with whatever needs they have. Also, um, I'm very well aware that a lot of people may not have an interest in helping someone in India, but want to work in their own community. And putting compassion into action even brings that opportunity up where we can help in our own communities. Uh, if people are interested, they can just smile at another person in the community and start to pass that human, as the, the Maitri project people call it, the, the small drops of compassion and start to pass them along so that we can touch each other with that loving kindness.